<coughs> I think uh, uh, the project that I'm talking about is uh, RF propagation for measurement mod and modeling for inside human body. And there are two labs involved in that. One is my lab and one is Sergei's lab. So I present my stuff and he presents some of his material. Uh, basically what we are doing in here is uh, innovation starts with science fictions and a technical challenge. <laughs> Wireless industry started with the Captain Kirk <laughs> and ended up with iPhone about 50 years later. I think Fantastic Voyage, for those of you who know, was the story of a, a small robot which goes inside the body and get lost. And now maybe around 50 years ago is ending up to be the capsule endoscopy that we heard about that this morning. So that's the metaphor behind the science in there. But where is the technical challenge? Technical challenge is to locate the capsule using the RF signal that is taking. This is the technical challenge that we are going after and we think is an interesting thing. Uh, and if you remember in here, this was lost actually inside the body. So it's meaningful in that sense. Now, but when you want to do technical challenge, the basic thing for designing any algorithm is that you have these devices which companies have, that have designed and you want to calculate the performance of that and inside body you cannot go inside the body. So what we are doing, we are trying to use hardware devices inside the lab, connect it to these devices and then develop channel models. This is basically what we are doing. Then you can design different algorithms for localization. As you heard it from Dr. Cave this morning, it's a very, very challenging problem to locate things using RF signal inside the body. So now in order to do the channel modeling, actually 802.15.6 is doing a lot of channel modeling variety. We need only implant to surface. In addition to that, we want this thing to be applied for localization. Localization either is receive based, uh, I mean receive signal strength based or time of arrival based. For receive signal strength based, you need like a model for receive signal strength and it's already available actually. 802.15.6 has developed that. For time of arrival, there is nothing available in the literature. So that's something that me and my students are trying to do. How far we go, I don't know. <laughs> so current research topics that we are addressing for this type of thing. First, we took the channel model that is developed at 802.15 uh, and we find the bounds for localization inside the body. Then we looked at time of arrival. Those bonds are not very satisfactory. Within five centimeters, you can find the thing. So we are going for time of arrival ranging, which is more accurate. At the same time, we look at the things which are very important for inside body, which is not important outside of the body. One of the major issues is the effect of body motions. And the other, the other one is effect of non-homogeneity of the body. Because when you do the localization, Outside, you're talking about time of flight, times of velocity of light, which is in the air. But inside the body, these are fluids, and they have different conductivity. And that causes problems. So we have done some research, preliminary research on that. I will show you some slide on that. And the last thing is, if you want to do measurement inside the body, you cannot place antennas. For other things, you can place antennas, measure what is the thing. But in here, either you need to use phantoms, or human body and match these things together. And at the end, you need computer simulation. And we are doing that as well. So I just give you one slide per each of these activities that we have. The first one is for like existing channel models. This is the one by 802.15.6. We define the scenario. And based on that scenario, we, cal we can calculate. Since the channel model is available for receive signal strength, I can give you the accuracy and calculate the accuracy. We have calculated, details are available in the papers, not in here. So we go inside the stomach and we get the three different organs which are involved in capsule endoscopy and we calculate the performance, means accuracy, in terms of number of sensors that you put on the body and in terms of number of capsules that you may have inside your body. 
So this type of analysis is doable, and then you go over that, you see that accuracy is within few centimeters, and that's why given imaging is also observing, and was the material that Dr. K was referring to this morning. So we need to go to time of arrival. What are the challenges there? Challenge number one, it is non-homogeneous. Since it is non-homogeneous, the same problem that I told you earlier. Now I will have some inaccuracy because I don't know which path it has traveled inside the body. So I have to get the average speed inside the body. And if I get the average speed inside the body, I make some error. How much is that error? We have done some of that, some of the analysis in that, and we are continuing on that. The second problem that we like, uh, looked at is mo movements of the body. Movements, you measure it, measure it with Doppler. So we have measured some of the effects of Doppler, I mean amount of Doppler, in different format of the body, in a standing still, walk, and jogging. And then our next step in here is now we look at, like you have sensors and you do these things, the distance changes. See, you, cannot, you don't have fixed distances anymore. And then the next thing is our measurement program that I told you. In measurement program, we have designed a chamber already in the lab, which uh, takes the effect of, uh, effect of multipath away. Because signal which goes through the body suffers from a lot of attenuation. So if you have multipath, you cannot measure. So we have created the chamber. We have two phantoms. One is full phantom with the bones and organs. The other one is hollow phantom. And we check them for surface to surface type of thing with human being. But for intrusive, we do them differently. So it's part of our different. The other thing that we are doing is computer simulation. We are using finite difference time domain. Basically, in a new format, we want to apply it to transformation of waveform inside the body. And then, based on that, we calculate the measurement errors. So the time being, we don't have very good results. Sergey is working on that to create the good results, and now he talks about that. Can you open this? This this one, right? Seven so. Seven so. Okay. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Just remove this. Remove this. Just a second. I'm sorry about the little delay, but uh, well. Uh, we are trying to use our power right now, our numerical power right now. Uh, in this department, and WP actually, thanks to Kavi, we have a number of good servers. And those servers allow us not only use the, uh, not only use the uh, existing uh, numerical packages. What is going on? Okay, now it is. The wireless is there. <laughs> well, uh, the use of those servers uh, allows us no, not only to um, uh, test the existing uh, commercial uh, uh, numerical software, but also um, use our own one. And today, very briefly, we will be talking about two solvers, one of them, the FDTD, and this is our custom product, and I'm opening, let's say, the kneeling kneeling human project and the basic solver has been done in uh, MATLAB here we see one uh, uh, it's actually one of our students I hope not before the ERA exam one of our PhD student and there's you can see one of the antennas is actually inside there are big dipoles uh, but it really doesn't matter and one of the antennas um, uh, is on the back and another one exactly on the surface uh, of the body here uh, at that point. So basically I'm turning on FDTD and there are three projections. And uh, this is the real-time simulation. This is not, uh, not the uh, recording or movie or something like this. Uh, we can see here time domain in nanoseconds and there are three, three signals in here. The first signal is the transmitting antenna which is inside of my stomach and there are two of them. One of them is here and another one is a little bit on the back, right? 
So the first one is a transmitting, and the red one receiving first one, the receiving second one. And when it finishes after 12 nanoseconds, we are already at 4 nanoseconds right now, uh, we can see that actually the power difference between those two signals is about 30 dB. 30 dB, it means it's critical to, it's obvious fact, right? But especially for students, it's important to realize it's very important to put the antenna on the body once we are talking from the body. Even a little bit of distance brings us a 30 dB difference. Moreover, at 4 or 2 megahertz here, we see essentially the Fresnel region. So what does it mean, Fresnel region? It's not the near field. There is no, for, for such a frequency, there's pretty much no inductive coupling. We are already, we can talk about the allocation, about using the multiple array uh, 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 elements, for example, for this case, uh, and uh, like proceed with this one. Actually, uh, the simulations are finished already, almost finished already. Uh, I can go probably uh, very quickly to, uh, um, <clears throat> very quickly to the uh, theoretical part. Um, how can I make this slide show? Slide show, please, right. Very quickly to the theoretical part. In short, we have uh, implemented the standard FDTD uh, with interpolation for uh, material properties. And in this case, our major goal, what uh, 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 problem uh, we started to solve for CAVI, and uh, this was uh, the first task for our lab, we were supposed to answer the question, what is better, unsoft HFSS, uh, uh, the full wave solver, or FDTD? Here we use the full uh, um, uh, body uh, model from unsoft HFSS, maybe a uh, uh, some of you are aware of it. Uh, it's it's pretty comprehensive model. And we compare it with pretty basic FDTD modeling. And here you can see essentially the uh, errors. Uh, this is uh, one of the major, one of our major results that we spent uh, probably half a year for. Uh, here you can see the errors between the FDTD and terms of the chief assess in the received voltage. The point here is a little bit, uh, uh, the point here is, in the runtime, the point here is in the runtime. If we'll, uh, <coughs> FDTD for this case, it runs, uh, runs about 10 minutes or something like this. Also, the GFSS run here for one hour, two hours, five hours, eight hours, something like this, 12 hours. And there is a size of, of the mesh, finite element mesh. This is a number of tetrahedra for also the GFSS modeling. We see that actually Ansoft does converge. This is the relative error, and the, <coughs> the result for FDTD is 33 millivolts. The result for Ansoft changes. Both results tend to each other really, but only at that, at that domain. What does it mean, this domain, that we have to spend about eight hours and to have the mesh with about 700,000 tetrahedra in order to reach those FDTD results, which we can get in 10 minutes or something like this. So in certain cases, this case was for out-of-body antenna and for a homogeneous body, but in certain cases we can achieve much faster speed by using simpler solver in this case like uh, uh, FDTD. And this is especially important because Kavi pointed our attention. This is especially important for uh, real-time prediction, for example, of moving body when, when, when it's come to uh, uh, like uh, really tracking uh, the movement. So. Um, this, is, this, 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 uh, this table shows us the different errors in received voltage. Uh, we are tracking the received voltage for matched antennas. Um, and the FDTD runtime and versus uh, the unsoft HFSS runtime. And here are different shapes. We have uh, uh, our custom body meshes uh, for a number of subjects who are mostly our students and professors. Some, uh, sometimes there are some phantoms. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we try to compare the performance of actually three solvers. We have another more, we have the CST solver also uh, in play, but I'm not showing those results. And uh, uh, um, I also think uh, uh, Kavi is supporting this work, also Matt works and Lincoln Labs. 
And uh, with regard to the antennas, probably I should skip this part because uh, we were talking uh, a lot about this. But I only would like to mention with regard to coil antennas that we are using, there is also a nice analytical theory behind it. There is very nice analytical theory for uh, coil antennas with a finite uh, ferrite core, and it can be applied to predict receive voltage, for example, uh, effective um, uh, magnetic permeability and uh, other parameters of uh, those small antennas. All right, thank you.